Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Retro Muscle. Thank you for joining me, and sorry it took so long to get this out there. I've uh, just been busy with a few things. Uh, and also, uh, you know, making these videos, it's, um, you know, not the easiest at times because I'm doing all the research myself, and uh, I don't claim to be an expert. I don't have all this knowledge at the, the tip of my tongue. Uh, I really do um, research through the magazine collection that I have on whatever subject I'm doing. And, uh, you know, I really do take it seriously. Uh, that's why this episode is uh, it's going to be another one of the competition recaps. So I actually talked to my dad and I asked him what he thought would be a, an interesting show to cover. And uh, he came up with the first ever drug tested natural mr america and i thought that's actually a great idea um it's a show that not a lot of people really talk about i mean i guess some people are aware of it but let's be honest um the natural shows are not as popular so knowing that i'm covering the natural mr america i automatically know that i have to do some research on chet yorton because he's the promoter of the event so i immediately went to uh the iconic issue, the premiere issue of natural bodybuilding that him and Mike Dayton produced. But I was actually wrong. It, this magazine um, first came out in October of 1981, but the first Natural Mr. America was in 1978. But before we get into the full contest recap, I want to talk about the man himself, Chester Yorton. Chester Yorton was born in 1940. Uh, he was an athletic kid. And uh, actually, shortly after high school, he was in a, a horrible car accident. A lot of surgeries needed to be done. I believe that they wanted to amputate one of his legs, and he refused. He was actually able to overcome that and become a top-notch bodybuilder in the West Coast. From 1960, Chet went on to compete in the AAU, but never placing very high. Um, he gained a lot more notoriety for leaving the AAU and jumping over to Joe Weider's IFBB. He won some prestigious shows in the mid-60s. Uh, he won the Mr. Los Angeles in the IFBB and also the Mr. America. And uh, he won the crown jewel at the time, the uh, NABA Mr. Universe, the pro show. But Chet dropped out of the scene uh, in 1966, right after that win. He eventually competed again in 1975 um, at the NABA Mr. Universe again. But shortly after his win in 1976, he actually um, did an interview with the magazine, and it was reprinted in the premier issue of Natural Bodybuilding. He talks about his introduction to drugs and that a uh, top bodybuilder, former junior Mr. America, and uh, also won a bunch of most muscular awards as well, was the one who introduced it all to the guys, I guess the boys in the locker room. And, and now I just want to point out that these are his claims from his interview. This is not me. I'm just reporting uh, the old facts. This is just what the history books say. He also claims that uh, he has not taken them and that some bodybuilders may have uh, beaten him at the Mr. America because of it. I'm going to post the full articles so you guys can read all this stuff. Uh, it's just too much to get into right now. Uh, but this line really struck me. Uh, the final blow came when I personally saw the filing cabinet of the most publicized gym in Southern California. The bottom drawer was completely filled with syringes, needles, pills, and growth drugs of practically every known form. Now, I mean, we don't have to say it. We already know what gym he was talking about. But by the end of this article, we see the beginning of the NBA, the Natural Bodybuilding Association. And uh, that was pretty much formed with the help of Mike Dayton as well. Let's cut to 1978. With the help of fellow natural bodybuilder Mike Dayton, Chet has laid out over $6,000 in prize money. That's how much I counted from the original ad. But I guess that's not including um, the amount of money he had to spend on the trophies. And I've got to say, I do like what he did with the show with the trophies. I love the cups. Uh, I wish more shows would have trophies like that, awards, whatever you want to call them. But not only did he shell out all that money, uh, he also booked the Tropicana Hotel in Las Vegas. And Chet made sure everybody would know about it. He made advertisements everywhere he could, even on television. Here are some shots from a, a locally broadcasted show out of Vegas. 
not only did Chet showcase bodybuilding, but he also had Mike Dayton uh, going out there and also performing his feats of strength. But we eventually get to this. Here's the wrinkle. Although promoting natural bodybuilding is good and all, as soon as money gets involved, things get hairy. This was a pro-am show, and in order to qualify as an amateur, you had to be sanctioned by the AAU's physique committee. So even though Chet was giving out cash prizes to the pros, the AAU still needed to give him a sanction. But Yorton felt slighted and made it known that the AAU wasn't involved. In an article of uh, Muscle Trading Illustrated, I read that Chet felt like they were trying to rip him off by having to pay for their blessings. In my own personal opinion, I've got a little bit of a conspiracy going. Uh, this is just me. This is not anything official. This is just what I think. Um, I had read online somewhere that he was banned from the AAU for being in the movie, uh, what was it, Muscle Beach Party? Beach Party? Uh, I think Dave Draper was in it as well. Um, see, I'm, I'm not too uh, informed on this, so that's why it's just a conspiracy. So he's already had problems with the AAU in the past, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, Jordan eventually contacted the president of the AAU Physique Committee at the time, Jim Manion. I'm sure you guys all know that name. And uh, Manion assured him it was no big issue and to contact the local AAU officials and pay a $20 to $25 sanction fee. So uh, Chet goes to his local rep with a, a check, and they actually tell him when he gets there, um, since he has such high cash prizes involved in the competition, that he's actually got to pay an extra $200 on top of the $25 fee. Chet name dropped Manion, but it didn't help. This is where I think Chet feels targeted. This is where the conspiracy uh, comes into play. So he refused to pay, even uh, for the days upcoming to the show. People just assumed that he had uh, either paid for the sanction or it was just taken care of because they, they were going on with the show regardless. I think it really bothered the local AAU committee uh, in Vegas, but he Chet eventually talked to Manion on the phone again, and they said, you know, whatever, it's going to happen. You're going to do the show regardless. Uh, he did it without the AAU's blessing, and it should be no problem. And for those wondering out there why, like, that would matter, or like, so what? You know, what is he going to get fined? Who cares? I think what Chet is more concerned about is the... Uh, future for his amateur contestants because he doesn't want them to get blackballed at future competitions that could then qualify them as pros, which could then get them actual pay. So, uh, you know, I, I see that he cares about that, but also we're seeing that he cares about his pride, uh, integrity. He doesn't want to feel slighted by the AAU. And, you know, that's why I think it's a deeper issue than just, uh, you know, 200 bucks. The guy had money. But, all right, uh, now on to the real drama, uh, the competition. But before we start, I'd like to list off the judges for the show. Chet was able to get a star-studded lineup of past champion bodybuilders like Leo Stern, Earl Maynard, Joe Nista, Bill Pearl, and Mike Deaton. I want to start out with the amateurs first. And uh, the reason I want to start out with the amateurs especially is because uh, while I was doing my research... I was going through a muscular development, and I found an article written by one of the amateur contestants, and that was Bob Gallucci. And he wrote a very good article um, showing the real-life pitfalls of a natural bodybuilder. And there's actually some cool photographs of him interviewing a couple of the other contestants um, before the show. Um, since we're talking about him, uh, Bob actually placed second just ahead of John Wilsowski, but both men were outclassed, I mean, compared to the truly impressive natural physique of Tyrone Young's. I mean, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I mean, look at this photo. Also, as a side note, Ty Young's went on to win the 1979 Natural Mr. America. But uh, it's, I can't find any other competitions after the year 79. So he must have retired after that. It's a shame because he was such an impressive bodybuilder. Even Bob Gallucci himself said it in his article that Tyrone was the clear winner and that he was proud to be runner-up to him in a natural show. Okay, on to the professionals. Um, now, this is a natural show, but there's a lot of competitors here, especially in the pro circuit, that did shows before that were untested. So they definitely had taken stuff at some point 
But in order to compete in this competition, whether you were a professional or an amateur, you had to take a blood test. And they drew blood before the competition. I'm not sure what the cutoff point was because, like I was saying, um, there was obviously competitors in the show that were not natural at some point. But long enough for it to make a difference. Everyone looked great that night, especially knowing the circumstances. In fifth place, we actually had a very impressive and my personal favorite, Scott Wilson. Uh, And I I was very surprised because I didn't even know he competed uh, in the natural circuit. He even competed in the 1979 Natural Mr. America. Uh, He came in third. Uh, In fourth place, Robert Taylor. And he actually went on to win Best Presentation that night, too. I always thought those awards were weird because if he had Best Presentation, why didn't he get a little higher? How come Anibal Lopez didn't get Best Presentation? Uh, Speaking of Annabelle, he uh, placed third, and um, I bet he thought he was going to get a lot higher because it seemed like he was going around with Chet promoting this show. Uh, He was like, he almost seemed like the face of the show from uh, a lot of these old pictures. Um, But he, incredible physique, great conditioning from the pictures that I have. But he just fell short to Ralph Kroger, who I believe, um, you know, very famous for competing in the AAU. Uh, and uh, winning uh, the Mr. California title, of course. But I think this was actually uh, Kroger's last show. And finally, first place, taking home $3,000, was Mr. Natural himself, Dennis Tinarino. And uh, yeah, I, I gotta agree, he was definitely the overall most massive, uh, had the best lines, And, uh, yeah, a great ambassador, I think, for the uh, natural bodybuilder. But I wonder if he practiced what he preached. Hmm. Uh, Well, let's see. Leave a comment below. Do you think he was uh, natural all the way to the end? Uh, Actually, if you uh, check out my Instagram page, Retro Muscle Mags, um, I'm actually going to be asking you guys out there for some suggestions for my next video. Uh, Actually, I already have one in the chamber ready to go. It'll be the third part of the Mike Metzer interview. I know a lot of people have been asking about it. But the video after that, I want you guys to be a part of it. So please DM me, private message. You can even email me, retromusclemags at gmail.com. Working on a website. We'll see about that. But uh, yeah, tell me, uh, do you want another competition recap? Do you want some nutrition facts? Please. Just reach out to me. Subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time.